Yep. Oh. Top of the morning. At the crib, at the crib, at the crib. Real being take care of the day, you guys. Where y'all at? Yep, yep, yep. Look like we got a good signal going on too, so we're gonna we gonna roll with that like that. Good morning, people. All over YouTube land. What's up, child man? You know, I can't drop some knowledge on y'all this morning. You know that what I do. Oh, I can't see y'all this morning. I was out walking outside. And I was like, hey man, I don't hear nobody too much talking about this truck and trailer registration, these tags and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Besides mostly, hey, good morning. Besides mostly um CDL guys, because it's pretty straightforward that they gotta get a portion tags and everything like this. But you know what I'm saying, as far as non-CDL, it's a little bit less intense of a process of getting the truck registered and the trailer registered and your tags that you need. But you know what I'm saying, a lot of people uh, on YouTube don't speak much about tags because their situation of owning vehicles aren't the same. Some people rent vehicles, some people lease vehicles, some people borrow trucks, some people pay. Uh, Jay Nelson, he tell them a regular 26K tag all the time. Well, yeah, to the extent, because when you say, hey, it's a regular 26,000 pound tag, that doesn't just always be the end all be all because the person in the office has to know what you're exactly talking about or you will end up with the wrong i repeat the wrong 26,000 pound tag there's a few different ones and that's why i'm making this video because if you get the wrong tags trust me you'll find out you're gonna find out there ain't gonna be no good way because certain tags are for certain things like, I'm going to give y'all an example in just a second. Let me go through these comments and see what we're what we talking about this morning. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do I'm gonna do a tar video for real. Uh, Demo, uh, Demoia? My bad if I'm saying that wrong. Yeah, I'm going to do a video about tars one day because uh, I be on it. I get in and get out. You already know it. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. How should I veteran say he going to Los Angeles, y'all? But boy, he going out there. Uh, but yeah, tags do change from state to state. So that's why I'm kind of... Nah, man. Hey, what's up, Toe Piggly, man? Nah, you don't want to get you with the wrong tags, man. Them police don't play. It's going to be a different situation. You know this personally because you're a company owner, man. So, you know, it's a consideration. So what I wanted to touch on was the fact that there are about three different 26,000 pound tags available. And I want to go back and clarify something because the objective of buying tags is to charge you for the weight that you are considering carrying. Normally when you buy a truck in a state, just personal use, not going to pull anything, they'll automatically set you up with a 10,000 pound gross vehicle weight tag in most, most states. And that's because you're not going to be using it for commercial use. It could be a dually. Most time they'll give you a 10,000 pound plate, even though the truck is gross vehicle weighted for 13. Never understood that. Not going to get into it. But you got to understand that there are things called farm tags that you really can't leave the state with. There are tags called business tags or for higher plates and that's what you're going to be asking for and those are recognized throughout the United States for business purposes and commerce in order to make a profit and that's what you're going to ask for um, I had a question from a from a uh, subscriber uh, that asked you know do you need the trailer in order to go get your tag for your truck no you don't uh, if, if you have your truck and you left the dealership and you don't have plates or you have your you don't have temporary plates or something like done go in there and you ask the clerk for a 26 000 pound four hire hey man four hire tag please don't get the farm exemption tag now that tag is going to be cheaper it's going to be more appealing but it's not for what we do 
That's for people that move hay around, farm equipment, back and forth inside the state. They really don't have to deal with it because they don't have an MC number. See, that's that's the thing. If you know, you understand. If you're an interstate commerce carrier where you cross state lines, you need to have an MC number. These people operate under a USDOT number given that's specifically for their state. So don't get that tag. So in Mississippi, it's a little straightforward. I'm going to put, let me see if I can put my flip flop over the tag. So you do it. That old flip flop ain't man. I don't buy nothing. But at the same time, hey, you see that the, the prefix in that tag is B26. And then you got the other numbers. But in Mississippi, B, and it's going to be a different color tag if you get the farm tag. So they'll know straight off the bat that it ain't the right tag. So B is for business or, or basically what we're doing right now, for profit transportation. 26 is the weight. So straight off the bat in Mississippi, they're going to tell on you. If, if you got the wrong place on there and it's rated for something else and you got this shit on a dually and, and it don't work right, they'll know immediately. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, registration. Now, one thing I've also been asked about on registration is, would you rather put the truck, register the truck in your company name or your personal name? For non-CDL hot shot, it's really up to you. You got to understand what you're really trying to do with this truck. Is this going to be an everything truck? Because I buy, for me personally, I bought an everything truck. I'm in that truck on the weekends. I'm doing what I want to do. I ain't burnt no regular gas in so long. It's pathetic because I'm writing off all this diesel. So, you know, it don't it don't matter. So I just stay in my truck. So if you're going to do that, you could do it in your personal name or the business name. One thing about it, at, at the end of the day, doing it in your personal name, even with a lien on it, you're still paying for it, it's still okay. Because at the end of the payments and you get the title, you can actually sign it over to the company for $1. At least $1 must exchange hands for it to happen. But $1 and a paper agreement, you can write that and change that over to your company later. But yeah, just for the sake of argument, non-CDL, you using the truck for everything. It's a cool truck. You like it. It's clean. You driving it on the weekends and stuff. Yeah, put it in your personal name. And if you have to unhook and go somewhere and run somewhere and get something in the midst of Oh, when you unhook, yeah, you can unplug the ELD when they pull you over. It's in your own name. It's not a company truck anymore. Take the magnets off and roll. So, you know, that's an advantage. And I showed y'all that in that video where, you know, we had to rescue the load. I had to do that. I had to drive from Illinois to Kentucky. Bob tell, hey, that's my personal truck. It's under 10,001 pound growth vehicle weight rating. It is not a commercial vehicle. I drive that truck to the moon and back with no ELD. As long as I don't have a trailer hooked up and it's not furthering a load. So that's, that's one of those things that's an advantage. But uh, like I said, five don't have to be long, man. I just want to touch on that. I want you guys to understand that there are some pitfalls in trying to sometimes save money. And if you see the price of that tag and you think you want to try that, just know DOT want to try you. Just know that. And it don't matter what state you're in, they got farm tags for every state. If you come out here and you run over these state lines and you go through these scales and you get inspected on the road in progress of moving the load and they find you out of compliance for basically anything but registration is especially, oh, that means you're trying to ride on these highways and wear down this road and not pay your part. So they're going to put you out of service. True. True. Thumbs up if you know. Bad registration is out of service. You ain't even supposed to be riding around like that because the registration ain't right. That means the insurance ain't right. You might have the coverage, but it ain't right. You know, with, with the tags you got, you ain't even supposed to left the state with this stuff you carry. So you can believe that insurance company going to try to look for that loophole, not to pay that claim, and you're going to be stuck with that. You know what I'm saying? Damage claim, late fee, whatever it is, you're going to have to deal with it. So to forego all of that, man, when you go in, and you're going 26,000 even, not one pound over. 26,000 even, business tag for hire. And you'll be good to go, man. Hey, till next time, I'll just drop a little knowledge on y'all, man. Just a voice of pitfalls, like I say. Hey, on another note, too, when you go to dealership and buy the truck, and you're going to buy the truck in your own name, buy that truck in your own name. Because in certain cases, if you're not going to a commercial dealer, they have a problem giving you a warranty when they know you're finna go pull the snot out this truck now. It's got a, they got some stipulations, stuff changed. You don't want to get caught up in there. So it ain't their business what you finna do. If you got to buy two tags, I did that one time. I bought a truck, 
I got it registered to me straight from the dealership, but it wasn't the right tag because I didn't tell them, hey, I'm finna put a 26,000 pound tag on here. I bit the bullet. Bought the first tag in the dealership, paid for my, my little fees and stuff, thumbs up if, if you think this smart. Paid my little fees, I paid a little three, four hundred dollars for the tag, came out, rolled on it without no trailer for about two weeks till I got me a trailer. And then once I got the trailer, I went up there and registered for what it is. But I left the dealership with a nice warranty. Yes, sir. You might have to buy two tags, but you most definitely won't have your warranty in jeopardy because... It ain't they being what you finna do with that truck. Cause 2500 more than like the like F-250, they know you might pull some, but it ain't they business. If you didn't buy it in the business name, you didn't use being the credit to get it, it ain't they business. And if they go to a commercial dealer, they have better warranties, they have better service plans because they deal with people that pull for a living. Thumbs up for the right dealer for the right equipment. Thank you and y'all be blessed.